President Joe Biden and Democrats just made a huge mistake that will likely cost them votes in the upcoming election. House Speaker Mike Johnson demands changes at the southern border or he will block money and weapons to the country of Ukraine. Former Representative Liz Cheney says she might run for president in order to save the United States of America, using the exact line every politician uses, I'm going to save you from danger and be your one and only savior. This and much, much more. Thank you guys so much for liking and sharing these videos. It really helps me out, so thank you so much. You guys just gave one of my interviews 70,000 likes, so thank you so much. Okay, Representative Liz Cheney of Wyoming says she might have to run for president as an independent in order to save America from Donald Trump. She couldn't beat Trump, let's be honest. She couldn't even beat Maggie Hagerman in Wyoming, who's unknown, because she's that disliked. So good luck, Dick Cheney Jr. You're not going to win. Don't waste our time. Now, Republicans might be fighting for the border, but they're not fighting for space. Today, several Republicans blocked Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer's bill to disclose whether the United States government and the United States military are holding and housing UFOs, aliens, and UFO technology. So all the records that Chuck Schumer wanted to disclose to the American public have been blocked. Very disappointing. Why don't they want us to know the truth about aliens, UFOs, and JFK? Let me know your thoughts down below. House Speaker Mike Johnson has just refused to approve more funding for Ukraine until America's border security issues are addressed and until the White House provides a full accounting on how they plan to spend American taxpayer money. Johnson stated, the open U.S. border is an unconscionable and unsustainable catastrophe, and we have a moral responsibility to insist this madness stop immediately. We stand ready and willing to work with this administration on a robust border security package that protects the interests of the American people. Johnson demands uh, were in response to the U.S. Budget Director Shalanda Young, who warned that funding will be cut for Ukraine in just a matter of weeks if more money isn't approved. She stated, Cutting off the flow of U.S. weapons and equipment will kneecap Ukraine on the battlefield, not only putting at risk the gains Ukraine has made, but increasing the likelihood of a Russian military victory. Who is this lady? Are you not paying attention? Russia has already won. Now, at the end of the day, neither Republicans or Democrats uh, are going to want to cave on their side of the issue. Republicans are going to want to defend the southern border, and Democrats are going to want more money for Volodymyr Zelensky and Ukraine. They're going to demonize each other, but eventually they will probably give them more of our taxpayer money. Uh, but this is the stalemate we find ourselves in today. Now, if we're being honest, both parties have been guilty of demonizing each other. But I don't think anyone is more demonized right now than Donald Trump. Recent stories circulating have evoked fear by claiming that a dictator like Donald Trump would be the end of democracy. Trump's campaign responded to these harsh accusations by stating, this is nothing more than another version of the media's failed and false Russia collusion hoax. Now, one of the reasons that Liz Cheney wants to run to save America from Donald Trump is she said, mark my words, if he becomes president again, he'll never leave. He'll never leave the White House. He'll screw over America. Uh, but that's not true. He did leave the White House, uh, and now he's trying to come back to the White House. But let me know in the comments down below, will Trump rule like a dictator if he wins the election? Or will he most likely rule like he did last time by focusing on the economy, lowering gas prices, and avoiding war? Let me know your thoughts down below. Okay, back in court, Donald Trump's legal team has just argued that the Georgia election interference case 
should be dismissed because as president, he had total immunity. Uh, D.A. Fonnie Willis already admits that this trial won't start till 2025, which means that Trump could be a sitting president and this whole thing would just be thrown out anyway. Georgia has maintained that this trial about election interference is in no way interfering in this upcoming election, even though it would take Trump off the campaign trail in order to sit in jail. Uh, but you'll have to make your own decision on whether you think this is election interference or not. But not everyone that is tied to the Democrat Party has something horrible to say about Donald Trump. In a recent interview with Patrick Bet David, former CNN host Chris Cuomo claimed that he would be open to voting for Donald Trump. He stated, and for, for people who are now going to attack me and say, what are you talking about? Trump is like this crazy man. Well, look, as you know, as Patrick says, data is the data, meaning this guy has a track record that you can look back at. Nobody was trying to kill us when Trump was president in the way that they are now. So he's basically saying the economy was functioning well, there weren't threats of world war, and nobody was trying to kill America. And now these big three things are major threats. For those reasons, Chris Cuomo, a very loyal Democrat, said he would be open to voting for Donald Trump. Now, I actually listened to this entire podcast, and I highly recommend it. Chris Cuomo uh, gave some fascinating insight on the ugly sides of politics and the media. Uh, I guess now that he uh, had his family and his brother gone after by the crazy left, uh, and he's not making millions of dollars at CNN, he felt liberated to open up about how ugly things really are in politics. With former Republican Representative George Santos kicked out of office, all eyes seem to be on Democrat Representative Bob Menendez, who is accused of bribery charges. New reports just released indicate that some of the gold bars that the FBI found in his closet are directly linked to Fred Dibus, who is believed to be the one bribing him for favors in his home state. Now, in 2013, Dibas was robbed and 22 bars of gold were stolen. They were later recovered, but the FBI had to write down all the serial numbers of those bars of gold. Well, guess what? Those are in Bob Menendez's house. This guy literally took bars of gold that the FBI has direct links to being stolen and then recovered, and then used to bribe this guy for political favors. <laughs> Gosh. But Bob Menendez swears on his mother's grave that this is a misunderstanding and that he did not take bars of gold from a criminal, even though he likely did. All right. Now, back in Israel, officials finally believe they have a solution to deal with the vast underground tunnel system Hamas built using billions and billions of dollars of donation money that was meant to lift people out of poverty, start jobs, get food stability, and improve the uh, economy there. Instead, they used it to build tunnels to kill uh, Jews. Now, the plan is to use high-powered water pumps to flood the tunnels of Gaza, thus forcing anyone hiding up to the surface and also rendering those uh, tunnels unusable. The Wall Street Journal released a report detailing this matter, stating each of at least five pumps can draw water from the Mediterranean Sea and move thousands of cubic meters per hour into the tunnels and flood the entire system within about a week. Now, hopefully, filling a bunch of dirt tunnels with water doesn't make a giant muddy sinkhole. I mean, Gaza already has enough troubles, right? Uh, but that would be an absolute crisis. Now, carving out the threat of Hamas is Israel's main priority. However, it's really difficult, especially when Hamas continues to attack you, even during ceasefires. Now, they did something incredibly dangerous. They actually fired rockets at Israel's um, nuclear weapons facility. The attack caused a large fire, uh, in the sensitive weaponry area, 
but luckily none of the nuclear weapons were hit. Now, I hope you understand what I just said. Hamas fired rockets at the very place that Israel stores their nuclear weapons. Had these detonated, Israel and Gaza would have been blown off the face of the map. Now, I thought Putin was dangerous, but th this was really, really stupid and really, really dangerous. And I hope they move those weapons and that Hamas does not do this again, because I could have been reporting that, you know, a major part of the world was blown up by multiple nuclear weapons. Okay, now <clears throat> stick with me. This is crazy. A bill to fight anti-Semitism in America, and especially on college campuses, was blocked today. 92 Democrats voted present, which means they didn't want to vote on this issue. And 13 of them voted against the bill, against a bill that would protect Jewish Americans from hate crimes. Now, the 92 knew that voting president was voting no, but they didn't want to be called anti-Semitic, even though they literally just voted against a bill to protect Jews from hate crimes. I mean, we live in crazy times, right? Now, I think Biden is making a huge mistake by not uh, calling his party in and explaining how dangerous this really is. Uh, it is splitting the Democrat party as many Democrats are actually siding with Palestine and Hamas and saying that the Jews and Israel are the problem in the Mediterranean. So this is splitting the Democrat party, which means many people will be leaving the Democrat party, which means Joe Biden is not going to be president again in the future. Now, what most people don't seem to understand is that all of this is connected to U.S. security, especially at the border. For instance, FBI Director Christopher Wray has just claimed that the United States is facing its highest risk of terrorist attack activity since October 7th. Ray stated, I see blinking red lights everywhere, which seems to suggest that Biden really needs to focus on border security, but my guess is they're not going to. Biden and Mayorkas are going to continue to suck their thumb and pretend like there's not a problem until there is a major problem. And, and I know this is true because they don't give a damn about what's going on in New York City. They don't care about what's going on in Chicago. They don't care about what's going on in the state of Arizona or Texas. It's not their problem. It hasn't reached Washington, D.C., so they literally don't care. This, this uh, apathy towards the border is putting every one of us in danger. You, me, your family members we're all in danger because of this. And the FBI director just admitted this out loud in testimony. Now, I'm glad to see that our government seems to be heeding warning as a new report from the New York Times alleges that Israel knew uh, of the Hamas October 7th plans at least a year in advance, but they laughed it off as something that Hamas would never be able to uh, pull off. Now, we all know that once this war ends, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and everybody in the Israeli government is going to be investigated for what they knew and why they sat on this information or at least disregarded it. Crazy stuff, right? All right. Now, before you go, I want to remind you that you are amazing. I know that this is heavy stuff, so don't let it affect your soul. Don't let it affect your mind, but you got to know this stuff because our country is in danger because of the morons in Washington, D.C. that are just trying to become multimillionaires off of you and me. Hey, before you go, please give this video a like. It helps more than you can even imagine. Just hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. I want to get to 1.5 million amazing subscribers, so hit that button now. Check out this video. Also, check out this video. Hey, thanks so much, and I'll see you on the next video.